Hey guys, Epicenter Brian here. Hey, I'm working on a project for a friend. Now, this is not going to be interesting to a lot of you, so just hit the skip button. Um, but this is a tape recorder. It's a Otari 5050 uh, tape recorder, and it originally belonged to a radio station. It was given to a friend of mine, and he said, hey, it won't play. Um, the reels won't turn, and so um, he went ahead and sent it up to me because I've worked on these before. So I said, yeah, I'll take a look at it. Now, I wanted to show you what I discovered on this, and uh, it's an odd one. Um, so, I don't know, a couple of you guys might enjoy it. All right, let's look at the back. Here was the problem. Right here, there is a band. Um, that's the brake band, and there's one on each reel. This one over here looked like this. If you can see that, that's got some black, gunky stuff that was sticky. And that was keeping that brake from releasing and um, keeping that reel from turning. So anyway, we got new bands. I installed new ones. The other one didn't look so bad, but uh, went ahead and replaced it anyway. So, um, you know, I didn't think anything about that. I mean, this was in a in a you know radio station people smoked back then um, it smells like cigarette smoke and I just figured that was some nicotine or something that got on the drum so on the break um, and so anyway let me show you something else I discovered and we're gonna look at that in the front I was in here to replace the light bulbs and the VU meters and to clean some switches and some pots and that kind of stuff and I want to show you what I found inside first off take a look down here don't know if you can see that well but there's this black brown goo down here and you can see there's some here and along here as well so let's take a look deeper inside down in here you see the usual kind of dust from a 40 year old piece of machinery but over here, can you see that? You see how shiny that is in there? Well, that's more of that black-brown goo, and it's all over the circuit board. So, I figured out what the deal was. Here, we're going to look at the top, and uh, this is the top cover. This goes in the back, and here is the top. Whoop. And this over here is the side um, with the brake that was stuck. And you'll notice that there is a stain right in here. And underneath of that, you see right in the corner, you see the stain here and you see where these vents are. Underneath of that, you see a little drop of black goo. So it looks like somebody had put a pop on the top of that machine and forgot about it and you know how that happens those uh, paper cups uh, end up <laughs> leaking and apparently that's what this is I believe this is coca-cola all over the inside of the machine so I tried cleaning some of that with um, isopropyl alcohol um, and it didn't want to cut it very well you know it took a lot of effort but it did clean with water and I found another spot over here real quick this was the bottom and you see that spot right there has been cleaned it has tarnished that uh, that metal but it came off really easy with just regular water so that's what I'm looking at doing today um, is I'm going to go ahead and pull this board out and I'm going to wash it and then and then dry it. So the big thing is there's a whole bunch of connectors down in here and I need to get all of these labeled um, before I unplug them and then uh, unfortunately the stuff that's up here is all soldered so all the wires are soldered into position so I'm gonna have to leave this front panel on while I clean the board itself alright so we're gonna try that see how it goes all the wires got tagged with the uh, numbers corresponding to the schematic or the board layout I should say 
So this shows all the connectors where they're located, so all the wires are tagged. Um, what I did was I made a sheet like this um, that I could use to tag the wires. Now that this is out, you can see more of that goop. It's a little easier to see, and now you can see the goop down in here. And so, all right, well, that's the next step. I'm going to use some water uh, that's been filtered with this big Berkey. I'm also going to use this water pick. This is an electric water pick um, for a final rinse and, of course, a brush to get started. So, um, here we go. Uh, once again, the coke is really in this region, a little bit up in here and a little bit over in this region. The rest of this is okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this start soaking. And underneath of this, I have a Harvest Right um, stainless steel tray to catch the debris. So here we go. All right, well, the brush has done a very good job and as you can see from the color of this water down here, that <laughs> definitely looks like watered down Coke to me. All right, well, I'm gonna get rid of that water and uh, flush it with some fresh stuff and then we'll start using the water pick. Well, let's see how this water pick does. I may have to do this outside, but we'll see, okay? Oh, look at that. That's beautiful! And the great thing is I can aim it right where I need it. Wow, I like this a lot! Alright, check that out. Holy smokes! I can even get right into the wiring and get that stuff off of there too. Oh yeah, yeah, this is working good, good, good. Well, that just worked really well and there is the water from the rinse and of course more coke and a bunch of dust too wow that worked really well I'm happy with that well the next step is to get this dry so I'm going to use the top of this uh, food dehydrator this is one that I modified uh, so that I can dry analog tape uh, and so anyway I'm going to just put this up here and run that at about 140 degrees for a couple of hours and then we'll check it out. Had to make a little change. Um, had to cut a gap here on both sides because this actually has the, the hot air coming out right in here, right at the edge. So anyway, that worked out great and it's been drying for a couple of hours now and I just want to show you, this is the side that had all of the coke. And look at how beautiful that looks. And in fact, over here, this is uh, the area that had a lot of dust, and that looks really great too. All right, well, that's about it. I'm gonna put this back together and uh, see how we did. The deck is all done, and it's ready to go back to my friend Glenn. Um, all I ended up having to do was replace a couple of op amps and the sockets that they were in. Um, they were in that spot with the really, really heavy you know, exposure to the coke. And so anyway, that was an easy task and it's all done and it's all calibrated. And uh, I've actually done frequency response on both speeds. This happens to be for 15 inches per second. I'll put that on the screen for you, but it's supposed to be plus or minus 2 dB from 30 hertz to 20K. And it is, it's beautiful. So let's check this out. Uh, dropped some audio on here from an old Lee Rittenauer album, and uh, let's check this out. All right, 
well, that sounds fabulous. For TheEpicenter.com, I'm at the center, Brian, signing out.